hello, hello. I have absolutely no idea what number interview I'm on now. And my makeup is starting to look a little bit faded. <laughs> but it's all good. It's all good. We're here with the gorgeous, bring the finger this way, Amy <laughs> Halpert from The Burnt Hands. And she is, um, I think, our furthest flung guest in the world today. So welcome, Amy. How are you? I am good. I just actually had my butt kicked at an exercise class, so <laughs> I'm, I'm just glad I'm on here. I thought the lady was trying to kill me, to be honest with you. <laughs> the thing is, now you've sat down, are you going to get back up again? Uh, I may not. I I don't know. This this lady, I, I'm telling you, she was, she was intense. <laughs> well, call for help if you're still there. A few hours after the interview and we'll make sure that help is sent i think my problem is going to be walking up my stairs because i was like i i got i was like oh my gosh my legs are dying hey everybody <laughs> we've got three floors here so when i've got the old doms it's not good <laughs> yeah Definitely. this one this was a pilates yoga class and i normally teach uh you know yoga but this one the lady was literally trying to kill me so i was like what have i gotten myself into <laughs> oh, come on in and say hi everyone if you're watching us live it'd be lovely to see you if you're watching the replay you're equally as welcome judy says hi karen says hi we've got m jo on m jo's coming live later on too hi m jo so amy you lovely lady you you are the founder of the burned hand yes ma'am which is um your facebook platform and your website and you are um very much in the in the spiritual space if we're going to pop you in a in a box um with special interest in yoga and journaling but really you're about bringing your heart your head and your health all together in order to produce a life that you love. Is, yeah. Would that be accurate? Yes, it sure would be. Fabulous. So tell us a little bit about how you came to set up the Burnt Hands and what that was all about. Okay, so I'm gonna do the really abridged version of the Burnt Hand because that story takes lots of twists and turns. So the very abridged, ver very, very abridged version would be 1997. Um, I am student teaching mm -hmm. and I finished my degree and I am a uh, first real job, part-time uh, teacher assistant because I finished in the middle of the year. So I got to go to a school and I start noticing that every time I'm doing stuff in the classroom, I'm bleeding. I look down, my hands are bleeding. Um, and later on, I don't know if anybody can see this size right here. Um, later on, I look down and I, I start to get blisters that are that big. And I, they're on my hands and my skin is thin. And then my urine is about that color. And I'm like, some stuff, some stuff is not right here with me. I need to figure out what's going on. Yeah. So um, I ended up going to the doctor and finding out that I had a rare disease. So that was the first rare disease. So it was called Porphyria cutanea tarda, which basically means that my skin kind of burns in the sun. So the burn hand um, was kind of where that came from. Uh -huh. But I was also an English major, so I have a BA in English. And uh, I had been to London in England. I love it. And I had been to the spot where Tolkien and Lewis sat and uh, near the kilns where Lewis uh, had a home. And I love just the essence of being a writer. And I knew Tolkien's quote, the burn hand teaches best, described what I was going through. If I had been through something, I knew I could teach others. So porphyria was a start, but we found out that I actually had hereditary hemochromatosis, which is known as the Celtic curse. So I am 55% British Celtic. They don't really delineate. Um, so anyway, so the gene is known as the Celtic curse. So 
it's kind of cool if you don't have it and but you know it the vampire lord there's there's all this like kate constantly jokes on me about looking young and so she doesn't know like the other day she was joking on me about looking young and i was like the blood so it kind of is the blood <laughs> because the vampire lore came from hereditary hemochromatosis and porphyria so i went through a lot of issues a lot of pain um my grandmother had passed away in 92 from cancer and then in 97 my grandpa passed away and then in 98 i was in full-on treatment mode with everything that i was doing and i was planning a, a, a marriage i was getting married so planning a wedding it was going to be outside so there's a lot of stress that year so you know they knew it was incurable they they didn't know what to do for me so i had pints and pints of blood taken which is called phlebotomies so i was phlebotomized to the point of being anemic um and then i still obviously managed to get married and everything and you go on down the road to about 2001 i had my first baby girl which um you know was a, a blessing because there was a time when they kind of hinted that they weren't sure about me having kids mm -hmm. which was scary and then in 2002 i had my second baby girl that was not planned uh, that far apart <laughs> so they're 18 months apart so after the birth of second baby girl in 2003 i was so just burnt out with life and everything and, and I was trying to be a mom and trying to have two babies and trying to live. And I took a little break from teaching because I just couldn't deal with all the phlebotomies, still treatment, still having babies. So then when I went back to teaching, um, I felt better. I'd started to actually feel better. Mm -hmm. So then I was diagnosed with another disease. So that makes three. Then I was diagnosed with another one later. And then another one, then a secondary disease offshooting of that one, and then finally another gene mutation was found. So at that point, <laughs> there's there's like I said, that's I got to make this a bridge. Yeah. Um, so, so at that point, um, in 2013, I could hardly move. My hip had gone out. My shoulder had gone out. Um, you couldn't touch my skin. My skin felt like it was burning all the time. If anybody touched my skin, it just drove me crazy. Uh, my dad, I, like, I can't even talk about how sad that was because he would just be, like, he liked to touch you and hug you. So it was very difficult emotionally. Yeah. Husband just brought me coffee. Thank you. Thank you, husband. <laughs> no, that's nice. You're probably, like, needing a break. <laughs> So yeah, so I went through a lot of trauma. So physical, mental, spiritual trauma. So that's the start and that's the whole burn hand. Like, so how did you manage with your babies when skin contact was such a horrible thing for you? So there was a period of time where it was less bad, then it got worse. Mm. Um, so I started researching like a mad woman. I am uh, phenomenal at tuning into my body and you can call it whatever you want. You can call it God. You can call it the spirit. You can, I don't want to label anything. You call it whatever you want to call it. But I knew where I needed to go. I knew where I needed to research. I had never heard of medical medium before. I didn't know any of these words. I didn't know law of attraction. I didn't, I never watched secret. I didn't know anything about empath. I didn't know anything about intuitiveness. Mm -hmm. I just knew what I knew. So I started researching and every time I started researching, it was the right path and it led me to the next place. So I started looking into the gut bacteria in the brain and I healed that and I just kept healing layers and layers and layers. Um, uh, you know, when I felt bad, when I felt depressed, what had I eaten, what was triggering, uh, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's autoimmune so food had started to attack me at one point so i couldn't eat gluten sugar like the list was crazy mm. um so i started removing that and getting straight 
I started using this blend of phytotherapy, which is plant-based healing. And then when I was in my worst pain, this crazy lady <laughs> said to me, you need to go to yoga. And I said, you're out of your flipping mind. I can't go to yoga. What's wrong with you? I can't move. This hip's gone out. This shoulder's gone out. Like moving was the last thing I felt like doing, you know? So as I started yoga again, I thought this, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, so I recently wrote a, a post about it because for those people who are trying yoga for the first time, you probably think like me, you know, you're in pain or maybe you're coming to it because your thoughts are all crazy and you think it's going to connect you. But you look at these people and you're like, what the world are they doing? <laughs> you know, you think pretzel. Mm. So anyway, so I came to yoga. So that's the abridged version of all that. So, yeah, in 2015, I became a certified vinyasa yoga instructor. Fantastic. So you have obviously gone through the mill and had lots of stuff that has tested you time and time and time and time again and yes. you still look that young <laughs> i don't know how i really don't <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah i my body felt so old i felt like i was 80 years old at um well i, I felt like that at 23 yeah. At 23 years old, I felt like it was 80. Mm. So then, you know, 30 and then 33. And then I was like, oh, my God. And then by the time I reached 40, I was like, OK, I'm 40. We've got to we've got to step some stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, sat there today, how old do you feel? Today, after if that I workout. To that class, I got, it, that workout class kind of scared me because the ladies were older than me, and they were all like, "Whoa, wow, I got this!" Whoa. And I was like, <laughs> "So, um, if it okay, so if it wasn't for the workout class, I'd maybe feel my thirties because I still don't, I still don't mind feeling like you know, I actually don't mind feeling my age now. Um, but you're not you know, fit. No, I'm not 30, but I'm going to pretend I'm 30. So I don't mind feeling my age, though. No, I really don't mind feeling 40. Um, I think that part of the, and I'm actually older than that, so to be honest with you, but <laughs> um, I think that part of what's helped me the most was the most horrific experience. And the day that I, I sat on the couch in 2013, it was near my birthday, which is in November. So I was sitting on the couch. I was in pain. I was in my pajamas. Um, they diagnosed me with fibromyalgia as well as Hashimoto's and all the other stuff. Um, the latest research that I had done on this gene, there's a, it looks like a cuss word. It looks like a cuss word gene, which is fine that I have it because I do like to cuss. <laughs> but uh, I only do that in my head uh, unless you know me in real life. Um, so the gene was the MTHFR. So I called it the mother effer gene. Hope that's okay. No, it's fine here. You're fine here. <laughs> so that was a methylation cycle that my body wasn't um, fully taking and processing things that I needed. Mm -hmm. So I knew that I was at the rock bottom. And when you're at rock bottom, like you really got no other choice i mean well you know you have no other choice you can either stay where you are be miserable be in pain you know or you can work your way up yeah so the ludicrous idea of moving even when i was in pain i was like well f this i mean i'm in severe pain anyway i might as well go try this crazy yoga and see <laughs> what happens you know yeah. so i started moving and i started doing what i needed to do you know, hey, Trudy. So um, when I started my yoga teacher training, so from 2014 to 2015, when I started, uh, and this is why anybody who tries yoga, anybody who's ever asked me, I could hardly hold myself up. I would look at my wrist at the end of class 
-hmm. And I would have like all these lines and I would like, I'd just be in so much pain, you know? Hey, Corey. So yeah, so my yoga journey was crazy because I was in the most pain ever, you know, and getting in down dog, I was like, who are these people kidding? <laughs> yes. So that point, I think was when I knew that I had to do more. So that was the whole head, heart, health, mm -hmm. because I knew that my thoughts were not serving me. They weren't helping me become who I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. So that was when I started journaling as well back then. So that was my the beginning of my journal therapy kind of stuff that I started doing. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about, you know, connecting in with the journal. Was that something that you were um, suggested to do? Was, was that something that you decided to do yourself? I just decided uh, I've always been a writer. Mm -hmm. I've been, I wrote poetry when I was 15 and I would had the blog, you know, the burnhand.com. And the burnhand.com blog at first, because I was so afraid to be me, at first I actually wrote under an avatar because mm -hmm. I didn't want anyone to know I was in that much pain, you know, because people, I was still trying to teach. I was still a classroom teacher and I didn't want people to be like, this lady's crazy. She's a teacher and she's got these diseases and what's going on with this lady and she's just crazy. <laughs> so, you know, so I wrote for a long time. And then when I finally stepped into myself, I think I changed the picture to me in maybe 2012. So I started writing the blog in 2011. I think I find, just took me a year. So I think it was me by the time it was 2012. So by 2013, I was really documenting some of the crazier situations. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, by 2014, I committed I've got to do this. I've got to do this. I've got to do this. I've got to change my thoughts. I've got to change my body. I got to change my health. The whole mm -hmm. thing is connected. So by 2015, all the work that I was doing, all the research, um, all the positive thinking, I had this little book, watch me not have it here because it's upstairs. I had this little itty bitty tiny book mm -hmm. and I had convinced myself it was like instant karma. So I convinced myself that every day in every way I was going to end with a positive mm -hmm. every day. And that positive quote I would end with on the blog, no matter what you read, like you could read the whole thing, but yeah. I was going to wrap it together with a positive. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I just knew the people who were in the most pain ever, they couldn't stay in that place. That was mm -hmm. not helping them. No. And, I just decided, oh my God, these people need somebody. They need somebody to get through this to the other side to mm -hmm. say, we're not going to stay here forever. Come on, let's all go. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'll take you with me, you know, <laughs> come on, everybody. So um, that's kind of how that, you know, developed. <laughs> Trudy's asking about if, back to yoga, does she need to go to a class or can she get a DVD and do it at home? Oh, good. I'm glad you're paying attention because I see them for two seconds and then they disappear. All right, I'm on it. <laughs> okay, good. Um, Trudy, I know you and I know you've got some things too. Here's what I would do um, with the pain because I additionally got certified in yoga for pain and arthritis. I would always start with gentle, gentle or restorative. That is the best way to go. Do not jump in to some vinyasa yoga class or a class, yeah, where they're like like me today, where I thought I was going to fall out. You know, you know your body. You know what works. You know if you have a joint pain. You know if you have a knee that pops like me or a hip that's going to go out or whatever. Mm -hmm. My biggest thing that I always tell ladies to get them to stay and not burn out Mm -hmm. don't do more than your body's telling you to do. Yes. Um, so yeah, gentle yoga, Trudy, I don't know much now. I know when I was in London in London, they have all kinds of yoga studios. So I don't know about where you are. I took a restorative class just last year when I was visiting London, I took restorative 
And restorative is awesome because it'll prop you up. So I, you can kind of see in the corner, I've got my mat, I've got blocks, I've got like a foam roller. Mm -hmm. In restorative, you use like 50 million props and you lay there for a while. So let's say you have tight shoulders. And of course, um, right now, maybe um, you can be my guinea pig, Emma. Okay. <laughs> sit, up, sit up straight, shrug your shoulders up, down and back, move them because your synovial fluid, you've probably been sitting here for a while. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and then how does that, how, yeah that, how does that feel? How are you feeling? Yeah, and here, how are you feeling? Right. And then women, do you know what we do? We, we shrink, we, we hide, and, and I know there may be got yeah, we hide boobs, we hide the weight, we shrink it, we try to appear smaller. So I will often do this, and I am top heavy and, you know, whatever, but I will often do this, and I'm not afraid to do this because we've got to expand here, and we've got to start feeling good. So what I teach my people um, in my club, the Head Heart Health Club, we have a, a yoga section. Mm -hmm. And it's only, it is not vinyasa. I don't link a, a bazillion poses together. We do things like that. It's them watching me, you know, go inhale up and then exhale, hands to heart center, connect to breath. I'm always barefoot, feet flat on the floor. Inhale, feel your spine lengthen. Exhale, connect to breath. Inhale, feel your spine lengthen, get a little bit lighter through that spine. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. And then maybe you just needed those three breaths today and you might feel better now. Mm -hmm. So it's about finding the calm, you know, finding that one spot. So that's kind of how I teach. It's such a probably a strange combination, but it works. Journal, yoga therapy, mindfulness, and then being here in the present moment. Mm -hmm. So I just connect all of that because a true yoga teacher is not going to have you do the crazy stuff. A true yoga teacher is going to notice how you're being. They're going to notice you connecting here, you know. Mm -hmm breathing and yeah is the way you said that just that three questions might be all you know right i, I said just settle just for a moment just right settle. and that, right. that's the same sort of thing isn't it just just settle for a minute yeah because and hi nancy i saw you peek in yeah. because one of the things is, and i know um when i speak at workshops or when i Yes, yeah, so I've taught Corey, he knows. When I speak at workshops, when I have people who are stuck in a cycle of overthinking, mm. one of the things they do is they don't know how to get off that kind of roller coaster or that ramp. So yeah. even just settling in and getting centered and grounded and for empaths and intuitives, highly sensitive people, we're here most of the time. Mm. Thoughts things, energy, people, emotions. So when we get centered and we we connect to what's ours, mm -hmm. not theirs, yeah. it, it really helps us. Mm -hmm. So every yoga class that I start, you know, I'll start us with a centering and a meditation, usually to just figure out what's ours and let's let's not worry about what Chicky Lala over there is doing. Let's, you know, let's not worry about what yoga pants we're wearing. Does my bum look fat in this? Is someone going to look at me? <laughs> I mean, like, literally, you know, am I going to fall over on someone in this class? Let's not worry about that. <laughs> let's be centered and let's be calm. Mm -hmm. And it, and it's something that's neat. My doctor could not believe. I feel like I'm pointing. Sorry, I do that sometimes. I'm pointing y'all. My doctor could not believe I had actually started shrinking because, you know, all the disease and all the pain and, and fibromyalgia and whatever you want to label it. Um, and then when I stopped and I was like, I'm not I'm not 
claiming any of this crap anymore. I'm done with this. I'm done with y'all. I'm done with the doctors. <laughs> I'm done. Done. When I stopped claiming and just ignored all that and focused on me, I started mm-hmm. actually growing back to my whole giant height of five foot two, you know, <laughs> and that synovial fluid in the spine. When I do the exercise where I tell everyone to imagine lengthening through the spine connecting to the crown of the head, to your root chakra, and then just getting nice and long. Like I literally feel taller after yeah. doing that, you know, five foot two and a half, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> but I feel taller, you know. Mm, absolutely. So, yeah. So that's yoga in a nutshell. Cool. And you were talking about, you know, starting your blog and at first not wanting anybody to know about it and then um, coming out and Mm -hmm. saying, this is me and this is this is what I'm doing. And a lot of your blog is um, it's very thought provoking and it's written in a very beautiful way that it connects with people and, and people can get so much from it. Do you work to kind of an agenda or do you um, look at what's coming up for you and people around you and, and, you know, just really tapping into what is there? That's it. From the beginning, I've, I've, I've I've done something that, again, I couldn't name. I didn't know what I was doing. I tapped into the feed. So when I started, like, I got to do this for a second. So Mm -hmm. there was, like, waves of emotion that I would feel. Yeah. I would feel this energy. I couldn't Mm -hmm. name it. I didn't know what I was doing. I just Mm -hmm. felt it. I just felt so connected to some sort of source that was saying, Amy, everyone. It was like, I'm a geek, Star Wars. Um, I don't know. Maybe it was the Force, you know. (laughs) I felt like I felt so connected that I had to write this post for these people. I didn't know who these people were, but I knew they were there. I knew they were in my feed. I knew they needed to see this. Mm -hmm. So from the beginning, you know, I would take my journey, but then I would turn it around to this is the message that somebody else needed to hear. Mm -hmm. So now I do the same kind of thing. Like, when I wrote my, uh, the other part about, you know, stepping in your power, when I wrote my empath post, um, I was so nervous the first time I was like, I don't know how to really describe what I do. And then I wrote it and it just like flowed. And I remember pausing for two seconds before I hit publish. I was like, I don't know if anybody's going to read this. They're going to think I'm crazy. Well, whatever. I never delete. I always publish. I knit what once it's written, it's is out there. I hit it. Eh, okay. Yeah. Well, somebody's they're gonna like it or they're not. And then it was passed around seventy thousand times, and I was like, "Holy crap! <laughs> Holy crap!" <laughs> I was like, so they quite like. I was. I was just like, "Wow! I, I think they liked it." <laughs> <laughs> So yes, that that was a huge surprise. Hmm. I I like almost broke my blog that day. I was like, "What in the world's going on over here?" You know. <laughs> this is just going. To... <laughs> yeah. So you you write from a public perspective. How many blogs do you publish each week? It all depends. I want to. I'll say muse. I'll use my muse. You know. <laughs> um. This week, I, I, I there was a lot of stuff, a lot of weird activity, I felt like. So this mm-hmm. week, I think I wrote about four. Um, normally, I'll write two to three. Yeah. This week, I felt like an extra one was needed. There was just different things I was picking up on in my feed. Yeah. Um, the energy where I live was different, and it. Which is interesting because I know it, sometimes you can, in your country, maybe you feel like you're in a little bubble, like you're in your politics and you're in your stuff and and the stuff across the world might ripple over a little bit. Mm-hmm. But in my feed this week, I was like, all right, y'all need to calm down. Y'all need, <laughs> just need to pause. Y'all need to, eh, 
well, I can't say what my spirit animal of Eddie Murphy in my head. I said some other stuff, but I was like, y'all need to pause. I need to be zen about this. But at the same time, I'm I'm a little Eddie Murphy in my head sometimes. <laughs> so I wrote I wrote practicing the pause this week because there was a lot of stuff in my feed that I I just was like, what, what are y'all doing? Why are y'all arguing on social media? Like, because you say this, somebody else is going to be like, oh, yeah, well, they must be right if they say it now. Now I'm going to change my entire view. Let me just, mm-hmm. they're arguing about it, so they must be right. You know? Mm-hmm. So when I feel like we need to come more together, when I feel like we need to practice looking at ourselves as the human race. Yeah, yeah. Then sometimes I up my blog post, depending on if I feel like. <laughs> the so the same thing. Yeah. So this week it was like, I felt like, okay, y'all all need me to just lay this out a little bit better for y'all. <laughs> you all you saw them right, right from a journey of personally, don't you? Don't. Yes. Is that a daily day? Yes. Uh, of course, I have all of them up beside my bed because last night I was doing a big project. Um, yes, from the daily perspective, on October 1st, which was yesterday. So I love, love, love the start of a month. Um, I love thinking about a fresh month. I love opening my journal to a new, fresh page. And for October, thinking, okay, these are my goals. This is what I want to accomplish this month. This is what I want to step into or pull it closer to me. Mm-hmm. So I kind of write in a way, and I did not know this back when I started my process. It's called manifestation journaling, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so I write in a way that I'm pulling what I want towards me um, and focusing on less on what I don't want. So I, I do that every night. It's mm-hmm. got to be done. <laughs> so no matter what you've done through the day, no matter what time you're rocking up into bed, you're going to write that journal every night. I'm going to write, even if I'm falling asleep almost, and it's uh, like three affirmations. Um, mm-hmm. Because this month, my club, we're talking all about, and so we do thematic. So on the page, the big page, you know, the burn hand page, I will do quote posters that go with my theme for the club. Mm -hmm. Um, so this month we're talking about treating ourselves right, how we're being, what that language is, Mm -hmm. you know, that we're using. So last night I knew that I was doing this crazy thing in my head. So I was like, okay, we got to stop that. We got to stop this overthinking. I got to stop thinking about, you know, uh, the fact that I gained weight because I had had a knee injury this year, a -hmm. bad one that. You know, it's fine now, but as soon as it happened in January of this year, my club, my poor club, I was like, guys, I had all these yoga videos that I was going to record and I had to rest for eight weeks on this right knee. So anyway, as I'm working to get that strength back up, there's still sometimes a little, old st- why did you go sledding that day with your kids? Why? Why? <laughs> There's a little old story playing them like us in the past. We're here. We're we're yes. getting better, you know. So last night, of course, I did my affirmations around healing and being fully a hundred percent, you know, healed. And from now on, watching sledding instead of sledding. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so fun to sled. It's just not fun when you crash no. into a piece of wood, a wooden piece. <laughs> so yeah so anything that's happened i work that into the journaling mm-hmm. so if that makes sense so it lets you it, doesn't it and it lets you give it a bit of an airing rather than it sitting in your head and becoming yeah. a huge thing yes because i don't i don't want to be in why did i do this why did i mess up like everybody messes up mm. but stay but staying here what is that doing for me? I'm just stuck, you know, so I got it. I got to get back to here present moment. What am I doing right now? Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I, I kind of tell the club they can't complain without telling me what they're doing, what mm-hmm. action steps they're taking. 
Yeah. So that's what, that's the other reason I like the first of the month because we always talk about our goals and what we're you know what we're looking to do this month. Mm -hmm. And when you look at kind of your whole journey of um, of getting you well to be sat there with the amount of um, ailments and diseases and things that have come on your plate, what would you say were the pivotal things that have really allowed you that strength and that empowerment to come out to help other people who feel that way? Um, one of my biggest things that I said in the very, very beginning, I had, well, back in 1997, 1998, they didn't have any support. Like mm -hmm. we didn't have Facebook, maybe. I don't know. No, we didn't have Facebook. When did we have Facebook? I don't even remember what year that came about. We had MySpace. I remember that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we didn't have a lot of support for rare diseases and, and interesting things. But mm -hmm. I knew that I didn't want to be like everyone else. So when I discovered these Facebook groups for the diseases and I saw how crazy the groups were, mm -hmm. how they focused on all the negative. Like I said this to my club before, one of the groups that I was in was like, oh, I feel awful. Let's all take selfies of how bad we feel today. Pity party. For real. And and then I was like, eh, and the energy. And I was like, eh, blah. So I had to get out of all that. Mm. So I knew, like I said, you know, I had to pull these people with me. I had to create what wasn't there before. Mm. Um, and I just had to do what, what wasn't there. I had to surround myself. You know, that's one of my quotes that I say. I had to surround myself with what I wanted to step into, what I wanted to become, mm. not what was here, you know? Mm. Yeah. Cause this was yucky. Didn't yeah. want to be there. So I, th I think that answers you. <laughs> yeah, the thing that, that becomes really quite apparent is that you stepped into becoming what you needed back then. Yes. Yeah. So when you are working, every, you know, every day and you're going and, you you know, you're, you're getting in front of your crowd on, on your Facebook page and you're touching these people with your message is a great element of that motivation to be what you would have wanted to have in your world when you yes. were feeling shit. Yes, that's 100 percent. Yes. Yes, because I just knew there was no one that I could relate to. There was no one back there who was young. There was no one like even the doctors and, and I wasn't going to speak on that, but I'm going to go there anyway. I just was fed up with them. I was mm. like, what in the hell are y'all trying to tell me that I can't be cured? Mm. So then the Eddie Murphy voice says some other things. And I was like, no, y'all are just what you want me to be on this, 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 and this medicine. Then one guy had the nerve to tell me well and he was like this he was like shaking because I, I don't know if he was nervous to tell me he was like well i i would put you on this one medicine but it's really gonna maybe mess up your liver and this and that so i just you know and i was like well why do, why would i want to be on that for the rest of my life and i walked out of his office he's the last doctor i saw i walked out of his office and i said i'm never going back to him mm -hmm. and i'm never going to be on all this medicine and I'm going to come forward through this. And he's wrong. I just knew it. I was like, he's wrong. You know. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's the most important thing for empaths or intuitives. Is if your guidance is telling you that something is not right. It's not in alignment with you, your body, your message, your motive. Mm -hmm. What you want to become. You need to step away from that. <laughs> Yeah, listen, listen, absolutely. You know, if, if your gut is saying, hell no, then yeah. listen. So did you yeah. not take any Western medication at all? No, no. no. not at all. Uh, what, um, you know, what kind of healing did you put in place over and above your journaling and your yoga? What additional things did you do? I looked into an old... Um, Basically, there was a guy I found um, who had researched phytotherapy or plant-based healing. Mm -hmm. 
So I looked into what herbs and what ancient um, things had been out there that worked for thousands of years that work. Um, I didn't know at the time, many people who were doing what I was doing, insurance doesn't cover any of that. It's all out of pocket, you know? Mm -hmm. So I put myself on turmeric and a blend of a yucca root, which is Mm anti-inflammatory. I started, you know, removing things, healing the gut, the gut, the neurotransmitter, and I don't want to go too crazy, but I'm way into brain-based research. Mm -hmm. But I started looking at why I was feeling depressed and shitty, why I was moody, what times of month did this happen, what had I eaten. Mm -hmm. Um, I had, at one point in time, was so bloated and no doctor noticed. They didn't seem to, they thought I was just mad because I was fat. That's honestly what I think they thought. Uh, My back was bending I had a protruding stomach as if I was pregnant. And I said, this is not normal. Something Mm. is wrong. And then I think the one guy just thought I was just mad because I'd gained weight. And I was like, no, you're, you're not understanding what's happening. So yes, Trudy, I did a food elimination diary and that's on the blog too. And if you need any of this, I can certainly get anybody, any of these links. Mm-hmm. Everything I did has been documented on the blog. Um, you can see my food allergy testing where I was allergic. They did like 50 shots in one arm and like 30 shots in the other. Mm. I started removing gluten and the way that processed gluten was and sugar, white processed sugar. Oh my God, I was such an evil. I was an <laughs> evil witch. I took sugar. I live in the South, y'all. Sweet tea is <laughs> like this big. You're like, Y'all need some sweet tea? (laughs) And I took sugar out of my diet. And then (laughs) grandma was like, you want some of this? No, I don't want some of that grandma. I'm allergic to it. You know, and and it was like, nobody understood. They were like, what? No, you just think you just try some fancy new diet. And I started Mm. this in 2011, no, 2012, Mm. sugar free. And then, um, yeah, so I started doing that. And then, of course, all the rest. So Mm -hmm. it was gut, health, holistic, mind, what I wanted to do, positive affirmation. So it was like this whole process. Mm -hmm. And then, crazy enough, my my very first thing that I created for people who were following my my stuff, I did this thing called Four Weeks to Wellness because people were like, what did you do? Like, why, what, how did you lose 20 pounds? Why, you know, why don't you look pregnant anymore? (laughs) You know, (laughs) because I was like, I mean, seriously, it was all here Mm. and it was painful. It was very painful. Like I'd eat and get stomach aches and I, you know, couldn't be in the class. I'd have to be in the bathroom and I was like, I can't teach like this. I can't live like this. Uh, Reactions, uh, vertigo. I got vertigo from um, I think at the time it was the autoimmune response, mm. but yeah, so it was crazy. I mean, it was literally, it was literally trial and error. Mm-hmm. And you talked about mindfulness being part of kind of your practices. Was that about you keeping in check the the negativity or was that about more living right there in the moment or the pain or the yeah, com- it- yeah, it well, it, it later ended up being a combination. The first thing was the pain. Mm. The pain was 24 7 for five years. Five years. 24 Did very well. I didn't sleep. I didn't get into REM sleep. I never, I never, I didn't remember dreaming anymore, which I knew was wrong because I had dreamed before. Um, I would hear everything, I would feel everything. This shoulder in particular. Um, at one point in time, I mean, this, I, I like, I don't want to go back into the sadness, but at one point in time, it was so bad. My husband rearranged our room because I couldn't sleep a certain way. Mm. So what little bit of sleep that I could get, I had to prop up with pillows because certain areas hurt. Yeah. So, um, the first step in my mindfulness journey was to tell myself that I was healing every single day. 
It was mm -hmm. to wake up and it was not to draw attention to the shoulder that was in pain or the hip that was in pain. It was to draw attention here. So it was the present moment, but it was to say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I said, thank you three times. Then when I got out of the bed, right foot forward, I said, thank you. Left foot forward. I said, thank you. When I made it to the bathroom mirror, I had dry erase marker. I had written, I am healing every morning until one morning I woke up. And I, I mean, of course, I was doing yoga too. But one morning, I woke up, and I didn't even think about the pain. Mm. I just, I didn't. It wasn't there. And when you somehow, first started, when you first started that practice, did you ever get up and think, actually, I don't feel very thankful at all? Oh hell yes, <laughs> yes. I actually I, feel quite pissed off. Yes, I was very angry. I, I, I went through a period of time where um, I isolated myself 100%. I pushed mm -hmm. everyone I ever knew away from me. I hated everyone, everyone. Mm -hmm. If you were able to get out of bed and you weren't in pain, I really didn't like you. Yeah, exactly. That's how I felt. That's exactly how I felt. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was like, what in the world is wrong with me? This isn't, this isn't cool. This isn't who I am. I'm Mrs. Freaking happy. Oh, that's another story. <laughs> one of my kids and one of my students couldn't say my last name, Mrs. Halpin. And he started calling me Mrs. Happy. Oh, so I was Mrs. Happy and um, I wasn't happy. You were so living on that bill. No, I wrote this funny blog post. It's not, I mean, it's funny now. It's not, it wasn't funny to me then. I called myself Mrs. Fappy, Mrs. Fake Happy. Mm -hmm. And I knew, I knew that I couldn't continue in that manner. I yeah. had a responsibility to myself, to my two girls who were young. My girls were young. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be that kind of mom. I couldn't be that kind of wife. You know, thank, you know, thank goodness I'm, I, you know, I had the most supportive husband because without that support, but it was it was a really rough, dark, nasty, you know, headspace. Yeah. And and I even tried for a whole three visits. I lasted three visits to go to um, one of my doctors said, you need a shrink. Well, they didn't say it like that. But <laughs> they're like, you might want to consider therapy. Mm -hmm. and, and I went to her three times and I was like, she don't even know what the world I'm talking about. Like, she's just not there with me. So, yeah. um, you know, I knew I needed somebody who understood. Mm -hmm. And there was only one person at that time that I knew who understood, and that was me. Yeah. So yeah. I had to be the one that moved forward, Yeah. if that makes sense. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And, you know, once you, you kind of... <laughs> You got the bit between your teeth, didn't you? You were actually, I'm not going to take this lying down. You're not going to tell me that this is my forever. You're not mm -hmm. going to tell me that this is the reality that I just have to accept. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to proactively do something about it. But it, it's dark before that decision, isn't it? Yes. It's not, it, I, I mean, that those doctors, one of them had seen me for 15 years. Had been, I had so many different specialists seeing me for 15 years and was basically like, yep, this is the best it's going to get for you. <sighs> yeah, 15 years of being mm. told the same thing. Same specialist. And I was like, what in the hell? No, no, no. <laughs> it's really know, no. Hard not to start believing that if you're consistently told that. And mm -hmm. that must have taken some real strength to go, actually... Do you know what? I'm not having it. It's not yeah. right. Patricia says, I can relate on so many levels to this. I've been going on for um, a way. It's been going on way too long for me. I'm all alone. No family, no friends. Everybody turned their back on me when I needed them most. All I can do is rely on my own self and keep pushing. And, yeah, I think, you know, for, for a lot of it, it is about making that decision. And like I said, you know, you, you, you were ballsy to make that decision, to go, do you know what? Despite all of this negativity and despite all of these people saying this is it, you went, hmm, no, it's not. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to do 
about it. And I think, you know, if that is the only message that people take away, that you've got to have the strength to say, actually, I'm going to help me mm -hmm. and not rely on everybody else and their advice and their information. And, you know, I'm going to do what's good for me right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's an amazing message. It's, yeah, it's definitely, you do, you, you have to be your own advocate. That is what I said a hundred times to mm. anybody who came to me. Mm -hmm. Don't take their word for it. If something in your gut was saying that's, that's not true, that's not my reality, you have got to be your own advocate. Mm. Because they don't have to live with that decision. Mm. You Absolutely. Do. Absolutely. Yeah. And Trudy says, you know, she said uh, very brave and Lisa said so brave. And I think, you know, sometimes it is really, really brave. Now, I don't think that you will see it as brave because what you will say is I was doing what I had to do at that time. And, you know, uh, most of the time I felt less than brave. I, yeah. And I didn't even tell you about the torture chamber. Mm. <laughs> But yeah, because I stepped into it and I did some, there is a time I, I mean, I kept going to somebody who really hurt me and I knew that the treatments could possibly help me, but it was extremely painful. So yeah. I did feel brave during that time. However, I, I looked at it as necessary, mm -hmm. but you could hear me screaming in the other room with the kind of treatment that they were trying to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think, and that was chiropractic kinesiology. So, and I know some people understand kinesiology. Um, there was a lot of pressure points. So I had the 18 pressure points that they diagnose when you have um, fibromyalgia as being extremely, extremely painful. Mm -hmm. So touching me in those places was like hell. I mean, it was, it was just awful. It was, it was really bad. Mm -hmm. And then the base of my neck down, to the bottom of my spine was on fire. So if anybody touched me anywhere, you know, and then it radiated out. So just being touched, you mm. know. So I know that there were war periods of bravery. And, but now that I look back on it, I, I, I may think to myself, I'm surprised I went through it. Yeah. But I knew it had to be done. There yeah. was no other alternative. Yeah. <laughs> and you, yeah, you do what you need to do at any time. And, um, Corey says, I so relate to what Patricia just said, when you need the support from people that you have been there for, then they just turn their back and leave. And I think that what I would say to that is that, do you know what, some people, um, you say that you've been there for them and some people are just there for what they can receive, which is really, really sad. And you know, they're, they're there to be a recipient. They're not there to, to give in equal measures and it's a really sad reality and it's probably nothing to do with you, Corey, and it's, you know, not your fault. It's just the way right. that something are. And I will add a caveat to that is that when you go down a different path than others expect, when you deviate from modern practices or perhaps, I'm going to throw this out there, a religion that they feel you should go down because you're dabbling into yoga, which some people don't understand, it's yoga is not a religion. Some people misconstrue yoga as actually being a religion and you go into a pattern that they're not expecting you to go into. They pull back. It's often it's when you become empowered, isn't it? Yes. When you're empowered. That suddenly becomes really scary mm -hmm. to, to some people. Would anybody yes. like to ask us anything? We've got about 10 minutes. Do you know these hours keep disappearing on me today? I thought, sure. I thought I'd find you on the floor and needn't be fan. Well, I do think I probably need some more makeup. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> I thought I'd find you and you'd be like, and now we have Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I say I was doing all this today? I have questioned that a few times. Is Whose idea was it to do a whole day of live broadcasts? You're you're so awesome though. I think it's awesome. Just get it out of the way. Do it all in a day. Do it all in a day. I can do this. I got this. Hubby bringing in the secret coffee. <laughs> it's all gone now. It's all gone now. Oh, 
<laughs> Would anybody like to ask either of us anything? Anything at all? We're quite happy to come in and answer. Lisa says, I love that. Um, I had to be the one who understood. Amazing. What a strong lady you are. Thank you. Fabulous. So if there is people watching who are feeling um, like they're living a life of, of pain, of um, difficulty, what would your top tips be for them, Amy? My top tips are definitely find supportive people, um, number one. If you don't feel that you have that around you, you know, you can always come to me. You can always ask me for help. Um, you can always, if it resonates with you, you can always step into my group. And then the next thing is you've got to feel like you're not alone because I know it feels like you're, you're alone, mm -hmm. but there's somebody out there. There is a hundred percent somebody out there who is going through the exact same feelings you're going through, the exact same almost like thought processes um, because we're very much all connected. And, and I know that it feels so isolating to be in pain and to be in depression. But if there's one thing I've learned from this, I've learned that when I stepped into my story and when I told others, you know, uh, to quote CS Lewis, they were like, Oh, what you too? You know, when he's talking about finding the friend, you know, Oh, okay. I see. I'm not the only one. Um, so there are people and the third thing is definitely mindfully every single day no matter what you're doing give yourself a positive give yourself a, a mindful thought give yourself an affirmation in with an affirmation begin with an affirmation bless your water your drink your whatever oh this is so good it's hydrating me you know <laughs> you know exactly um <laughs> I'm doing something good for my body. I'm doing something good. Like every day, I don't care how bad you feel every mm -hmm. day. Tell yourself you're doing something good, you know, and be your own advocate. Mm -hmm. Just definitely be your own advocate. And if you can journal, um, and here's the thing I want to tell anybody who's thinking about journaling. I want to tell you that you don't have to write you don't have to be a writer. You don't have, I'm not saying that we're going to write an essay. We need an introduction and we need the three and then we need a conclusion and I need you to do some allegory. You know, no, a journal can simply be the three best things you did that day. Your three gratitudes, your three affirmations. It can be a thought bubble in the center with the word October and mm -hmm. then things you want to accomplish. Um, it, it doesn't could be not, you want it to be, can't yeah, it? You know, yeah. It's getting out of your own head. Yeah, it doesn't have to be anything too crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and I do like uh, people to get grounded and to connect to nature. Mm -hmm. One of the things that people in sickness most often do is stay in the house. Mm -hmm. I've stayed in the house for like a year. Yeah. I didn't even want to go to the grocery store, really, literally. I was in that much pain getting clothes on and then it felt so difficult when I would get out of the house and I was like oh my gosh I had to get out of the house today and then I realized what in the world I, wow I gotta get out of the house more you know and then people are gonna say to you are you all right and you're 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 not all right right and they're, and they're all comfortable yeah they are they're also gonna say things like um you know get over it already and yeah. and you know don't argue with them let them let them be ridiculous because they don't know how you feel there would yeah. be no way in god's green earth that i could even describe to my worst enemy even if i wanted to be able to touch them for two seconds and let them know on my worst day how i felt you know mm -hmm. uh you you can't really put how you're feeling into words for other people so it's so important to just find that space to keep going, you know. Yeah. Lisa says, I've enjoyed listening to you so much and I'm fascinated by the journal and yoga in together. She loves to write. Um, Becky says, thank you so much for sharing your story, Amy. I can relate on so many levels right now and you've truly inspired me. Michelle says, 
Um, I've been in so much physical and mental pain for many years. Finally, I'm starting to see the light at the end of a very long tunnel, and that's because Amy and Emma Johnson. Um, so thank you both very much. Corey's saying the uh, Head Heart Health Club is an amazing support group, and we are there for each other. It's helped me so much in that last year. Um, Trudy's just started regular journaling, and she says, I need to get outside. Even a 15-minute walk with Darcy and Daisy makes me feel much better. Absolutely, absolutely. Even if it is literally a walk around the block or to the end of the street or whatever it is, just to get a bit of fresh air, get it. You know, I think the saying, I, I don't know if this is one that you use at your side of the pond, but we say going out to blow the cobwebs away. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it really is. You know, it's something that is actually, you can feel that kind of cobwebs are where something's been left and it feels a bit stagnant and a bit stuck and a bit still. And going outside and, and blowing those cobwebs away absolutely is truly fantastic. Well, my darling, we've chatted for an hour. I was not thinking I was going to have anything to say, but I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you thought you had nothing to say and I can't shut you up. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> actually true. My club <laughs> might that. I'll be like, I'm just coming on for five minutes. 20 minutes later, well, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am hoping that you don't have too much muscle soreness to get your bum off that seat. Thank you so right. much for spending <laughs> the time with us this afternoon. Next up is the gorgeous Becky Coop. So I've got to end the interview the same way as I've ended, ended all the others. I'm going for a wee and fill my cup and I'll be back with Becky Coop at quarter past six. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Amy. Bye. Bye.